Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. And welcome to Talking with Teachers. I'm your host, Dr. Abdullah bin Hamid Ali. And today, once again, we have a very special guest um, who, inshallah, we're going to have some very interesting conversations with. Uh, Mr. Ramiz Kent, our brother, our teacher, he is a consultant with formal training in mechanical engineering, who receives his BSME from the University of Delaware in 1995. He's also trained in permaculture-based regenerative whole systems design, who served as a registered certified permaculture, permaculture design instructor with PRI Australia. He is a former co-director of the Permaculture Research Institute, a member of United Designers International, and on the supervisory board of the Netherlands Registered Nonprofit Ecosystem Restoration Camps Foundation. Ramiz serves as a Zaytuna College scholar in residence overseeing its permaculture garden under the Zaytuna College Center for Ethical Living and Learning Initiative, also known as ZCEL. Ramiz also serves as a trustee and an implant implementation team member at Plant for Peace Foundation UK and was a key contributor to the India-based Shivan's Farming Initiative of the Hans Foundation. Uh, Ramiz all has taught permaculture design, formal certification, and short intensive courses in Palestine, occupied West Bank, Egypt, Greece, Ethiopia, Yemen, Turkey, Thailand, Malaysia, Italy, Spain, Jordan, Morocco, Tunisia, Australia, and the United States in cities or states such as Michigan, California, and Vermont. He has also performed additional consultancy work on projects in Spain, UAE, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Oman, Afghanistan, India, Pakistan, Somaliland, and West, the Western Sahara. So um, as you can see, um, our guest is, you know, he's very, very well uh, prepared. Uh, Inshallah, we like to bring our brother, our teacher, Ramiz Kent, to the screen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, well, alhamdulillah, it's really, really an honor and a pleasure to have the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, um, of course, a lot of people don't know that um, um, that in the past, you know, we've had some very impassioned debates on Facebook about multiple topics, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and 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 really, you know, it's uh, you're like one of the few people that I could say that on social media, I've had some very reasonable exchanges with over the yeah. years, right? You know, yeah. and sometimes extensive, uh, even though I've tried to sort of just you know sort of limit my um, my social media uh, time. Uh, you know, of course, I have multiple accounts, you know, but I you mainly post things, you know, but like I haven't really engaged like in back and forth debate that often over the years, you know, but when I did, you know, you were one of the main people that I would <laughs> constantly have these uh, debates with. And it's funny you mentioned that because I, because I was, I was thinking back to, I, I often, I think back, you know, periodically on, on some of the exchanges we've had. And I think, yeah. I think one of the things that, um, unfortunately, um, people seem to be increasingly incapable of is, uh, or, or at least reluctant to allow themselves to, mm -hmm. to engage. It's just, you don't have to agree with everything right. that everybody says. Mm -hmm. And, and, mm -hmm. and especially if they're, you know, if, if, if it's someone that you, you like, <laughs> you know, if it's family members, if it's friends, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I mean, I've known you for a long time. As a matter of fact, yeah. I can remember when you first came to, mm -hmm. to California, <laughs> I remember that really well. Mm -hmm. And, and I always tell people, I really appreciate you because I, I don't agree with everything you say, but I love the fact that you're willing to mix it up. With yeah, folks. yeah. And you're not, and you, and you, and you won't, you know, you won't kowtow just to, you know, kind of placate people and, and, you know, that you need to be on this side. And you're like, no, why do I need to be on this side? Let's have a discussion about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're all here to learn. I mean, I, I can be taught new things. I mean, I don't know everything. And so I, you know, my thing is always, okay, uh, if I'm wrong, show me, 
Yeah. Right. You know, exactly. and, uh, you know, but you don't have to call me a name just because I disagree with you. Right. Oh, right. No. It, it, and I think if, and I think if the points that people are hoping to make, yeah. um, if, if there's an argument that, you know, they want to convince you of is clear enough. Okay. Then let's, let's lay it out. Yeah. But you know, we don't necessarily, we don't have to descend into ad hominems and, right. and, you know, when people are getting frustrated. I mean, that's when you know, you got folks frustrated. And I always, and I always joke with you. I was like, oh, that's the Philly in me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The land of the revolution. That's where it started. <laughs> it's up in Pennsylvania, you know, so, hey, man, you know, Liberty, Liberty Bell. Yeah, that's right. Rebel. You know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Even though, of course, you can argue, okay, the Boston Tea Party thinks something. Yeah, whatever, we, you know, we, but, yeah, we know, do all that. This is yeah. where we're signing in Philadelphia, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So, I, yeah, so yeah. I just want to, yeah, I just want to tell you, I, you know, I, I, I absolutely, I, I appreciate you for, you know, for being, um, you know, 10 toes down. As, mm -hmm. as as the kids like to say now, and um, I'm doing her uh, ten toes down. Okay, cool. <laughs> ten, ten toes down. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, mashallah. I'm doing yeah, this. I mean, yeah. I actually, def I'm, I definitely want to get into some important, some serious um, conversations with you about yeah. some important issues related yeah. to your special specialization. Um, and uh, you know, but but I imagine that a lot of the viewers don't know who you are. They're unfamiliar with you, you know. So and um, as in previous episodes, um, I mean, of course, I try to make this these conversations teacher focused or guest focused yeah. uh, for the most part. You know, so we usually start off with just a question about, OK, you know, who the person is, who are you, who's Ramis Kent? Um, you know, was you know, was it like growing up, you know, what type of family background you come from mm -hmm. and what put you on your uh, your trajectory, the, the journey that you've been on all these yeah. years? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, bil alamin, wa sallallahu ala sayyidu Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, sallam, wa hawla wa lakum, wa ta'ala ila bila alamin, wa ala alamin. So, uh, again, firstly, thank you for for um, for inviting me, you know, to, to you know to talk and mm -hmm. have a bit of conversation on a wonderful, beautiful, sunny Sunday, Sunday morning here in California. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, who's Ramiz Kent? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Long Island kid. You know, I was, I was born, born in New York, born and raised in New York. Um, I was I literally was born about 10 minutes from JFK, mm -hmm. uh, just not, not, not far from the border separating Queens from Nassau County uh, mm -hmm. on Long Island. And, um, you know, my, my mom came to New York from South Carolina in 1971 and she mm -hmm. came to New York to teach, uh, high school. She, she taught at, uh, uh, Hempstead high school. Hempstead, New York, Hempstead, Long Island, for for about um, thirty three years, mm, and so she was a biology she was a biology teacher, mm -hmm. uh, graduate of uh, Benedict College in mm -hmm. uh, South Carolina, mm -hmm. and um, so I you know I I I grew up with um, you know education as as being a uh, kind of an important component of. Um, of, of my life, you know, there was, there was an emphasis that was put on this. And I think mm -hmm. watching my mother, um, you know, do her job, which she loved. I mean, that was one of the things that really was impressed upon me early was just mm -hmm. her love of what she did, her love of working with, you know, with kids. You know, I, I also had grown up um, attending a, uh, a youth center that she used to help, uh, kind of run programming in a place called Percy Jackson, Percy Jackson Youth Center, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. South Franklin, right, right. South Franklin Street, Hempstead, New York. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, those are very formative um, experiences, um, just the whole kind of working with youth mm -hmm. and, and this uh, emphasis placed on doing things to uh, augment or help in the development of, of, of people. So, you know, this is, kind of a pretty consistent thing, you know, throughout the, the most of my formative years. Mm -hmm. um, it's just this, uh, this imp the importance of the development of, of young people. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I grew up in the, the New York of the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad, you know, my dad was, my folks had, had separated when I was three, but he was very much, a, you know, a part of my life, very important part of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, he was kind of more of the um, the person who had culture. 
you know, mm -hmm. appreciation for art and music. Um, he also was uh, somebody who uh, spent a lot of time uh, in the outdoors. Mm -hmm. So he was um, he was uh, very much into sort of you know he camped, he hiked, he mm -hmm. um, he was a climber, mm -hmm. you know, cross country skiing, and, and and I and I think you know he he was kind of a bit of an anomaly or somewhat unusual in that regard because he's a you know he's a black man who I, yeah. kind of these things that are often yeah, yeah. associated with yeah, yeah you know, i was thinking with, the same thing at the, at the outside yeah when i asked you i said what, what color was your dad <laughs> yeah no my dad no yeah, dad right, black, yeah. you know he was yeah, yeah. my dad was was born in dc but he grew uh -huh. up in new york mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know grew up in you know queens mm -hmm. you know it, we have family you know queens brooklyn mm -hmm. harlem the bronx Eventually, yeah. you know, he, he moves to, you know, he moves to uh, the island. I think, I, if I remember correctly, I think he, I think he might've been a graduate of Hempstead High. Oh, okay. But, um, mm -hmm. but, and he, and, but he was so, he's, he's a, he's very much a city kid. Mm -hmm. But I think there was always this, mm -hmm. um, this looking at nature as a means of sort of escaping or kind of getting out of that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, and again, that was something that also was, I think, impressed upon me early. Uh, so I think the sort of the combination of my mom um, being someone who's sort of steeped in in biology, you know, mm -hmm. the life sciences, mm -hmm. and and then my father uh, kind of being into what he was into, um, that that sort of put me on a trajectory, whether or not I knew it at the time, yeah, yeah, uh, to to kind of arrive to where I eventually arrived to. But you know, my my dad was very much into um, um, again, like I said, kind of the arts. Kind of a kind of a culture guy, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So whether it was you know, literature, I remember. I, I remember early on him getting me into, you know, the poetry of Langston Hughes. Mm -hmm. um, he had actually people that he grew up with that were um, that were writers, that were poets. There's one gentleman I, I, I can remember uh, vividly named uh, Lorenzo Thomas, mm -hmm. who was a who was a, a poet friend of his, uh, uh, who I think he grew up with in Queens. Mm -hmm. Um, Walter, I mean, um, Weldon Irvine, who mm -hmm. for folks that are familiar with music, he, he's, um, he was a, a close friend of my father's. My father played with, he played music with Sun Ra. Oh, okay. uh, I remember him being a big Thelonious Monk and, mm. and Duke Ellington uh, fan. And so, you know, th those were things that were, that were, uh, really important parts of my Mm -hmm. But again, kind of coming to be introduced to yeah. the world and the way that I saw it and the way that I experienced it with kind of these things that that were the the background. They were like the yeah. the, the substrate, the floor. Yeah, that's that, a um, you know, I, I kind of the ground that I grew out of. Yeah. 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 I mean, that, yeah, it's really so so interesting. Like just you know, like I, I've mentioned it before to other guests, you know, just like um, doing these interviews are very good for me. Right. Because, I mean, even for people I've known for years, you know, just to finally hear their stories and like their background and, you know, it's um, something I think, of course, the the viewers that they, you know, it helps them to appreciate, you know, um, the positions, uh, the opinions, uh, the inclinations, uh, passions that people have. Right. You know, you know, when you look at their experience, you know, you know, you kind of see like okay, what what probably put that person on that trajectory. And so, yeah. and so I'm, I'm here, like, as I'm listening to you speak, I'm saying, okay, well, you have like this sort of like, you know, theory application, you know, it's that like mom's biologist and then dad is kind of like, you know, he's, he's like, he's living a life. He's, he's actually living with the biological life, right. You know, yeah. <laughs> he, you know he's going camping and all these things, right. You know, so it's, and uh, you know, and so, you know, this sort of culture and um, science, you know the the and you and, you know and all of us you know we get uh influence you know even if it's like in hindsight you know you grow up and you realize that, oh man you know actually you know when i was growing up i didn't realize you know how like allah's kind of tried to put me in a situation where it, it gave me um a certain advantage right that a lot of other kids didn't have right um yeah you know, so uh like i'm like saying it's like well you know your, your dad he's, he's all these things so i remember um I said, uh, Dawood Yazim, when I first met him, and somebody told me about him, I was like, well, you know, he's a black guy, he goes out and, and uh, he hunts and, you know, and camps, 
And I was like, well, are you black? You sure? Right. right. Yeah. yeah, but he's like, he's like, you grew up in Nantucket. Like, yeah, yeah, right. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. So, yeah, like, so like, you, you didn't grow up in the hood like me. You know, like, look, so like we we didn't do those things. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it all depends on what city. Like, like between Chicago and Philadelphia, when I was younger, like there was a lot more. You know that a kid can do in Chicago than in sure. Philadelphia, right? Because, sure. You know, just you know, there was just so much going on. Then once I moved to Chicago, moved back to Philly. Yeah, you know, I was born in Philly, moved to Chicago right after my birth, and then and moved back when I was close to twelve in Philly. And you know, Philly, it was just it was just almost any almost nothing for kids to do, right? Yeah. Because yeah, you know, so, uh, you're from you're from uh, Westville, South Westville. Well, my 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 yeah, my father's side, my my. My uh, grandmother was in West Philly. My my father, my paternal grandmother is in West Philly. My maternal grandfather is in North Philly. Right. No. My, okay. My North. Okay. North Philly. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Um, like Ger like Ger Ger like well Germantown, Kensington, like kind of get well that probably probably a little further in. No, no I was deep, but, like you know, like like kind of deep, 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 deep North Philly, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Real North Philly, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, not like the good part. You know. But, you know, like, he said, yeah. not like the good yeah. part. <laughs> and because uh, I because I have because I do have yeah. I have family in Philly, yeah. but but there's South mm -hmm. South Philly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. So I mean, I'm of course my 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 family to go back to like my mother's side side. They go back to Kissimmee, Florida. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and my father's side go back to South Carolina. Yeah, South okay. Carolina. Yeah, you know, so like my grandmother and my grandmother. See, that's where they originate from, right? So, yeah. yeah. But at any rate, you know, but more about you. <laughs> no, but I think, but I think that the reason why this is interesting because I mean, I think especially for a lot of us from the Northeast, uh -huh. what we tend to find is that we have there are a lot of commonalities. So, mm -hmm. so the, there's there's often a South, you know, a, a link to the Carolinas. Oftentimes, right. South Carolina. Right. Um, you know, and then the other thing I came to realize was on my, like my, on my father's side, mm -hmm. um, his father's originally from my father who did, he didn't really know very well is mm -hmm. from Virginia, mm -hmm. but, and, and then his, his mother was, I think was born in New York, but his, her parents are from Bermuda and Barbados. Mm -hmm. okay. And then what I came to realize was, um, that this was a, only a handful of years ago that the Carolinas were actually a colony mm -hmm. of Barbados. Oh, okay. That's probably... So, so mm -hmm. it was until years later I was able to kind of join, mm. you know, join those two parts of my kind of lineage. Yeah, was the fact that I mean, obviously, America is a you know is a sort of a a, a, a yeah. child of uh you know of of Britain, right, of England, yeah, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. British colony, at least mm -hmm. a good port of, portion of it. Um, it wasn't until I I, I was able to to learn about that connection of the fact that the Carolinas began as a colony of Barbados yeah, that um, I finally was able to kind of make, make the other, the other connections. That's interesting. But, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, so yeah. So I'm, I, I'm assuming that you, of course, most of your time is spent with your mother, your mother you yeah. someone raises you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, um, would you say that she raised you someone in, in a religious fashion or it was, you know, yeah, I mean, I, again, I think a lot of like like many Black American families, mm -hmm. well, pre, I mean, for I'll say for for many of us that that sort of have have come into Islam, mm -hmm. you know, there's some connection to Christianity. Um, my mother grew up as a uh, as a Baptist, um, K Branch Missionary Baptist Church, Hartsville, mm -hmm. South Carolina, mm -hmm. and I remember hearing about K Branch, you know, growing up, and then had a chance to attend a couple of you know some services during the time that that I grew up and we would go visit South. Um, and then eventually, uh, years later, um, she had, my mother actually became a Jehovah's Witness. Oh, really? And I, yeah, and I can remember, I can remember when I was, it probably started when I was 11. Mm -hmm. And and I remember, you know, during a, a, a fairly decent portion of my, my adolescence going into my teen years, mm -hmm. um, you know, people coming by to do like, you know, Bible study and us going to, you know, the the, the meetings at the Kingdom Hall and and all of those things. Um, that was um, that was also, I think, a really. Uh, a, a really significant mm -hmm. factor, again, in my in my growing up and thinking about religion mm -hmm, uh, to mm -hmm. a certain extent. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, kind of looking back years later, the, the fact that you know, Jehovah's Witnesses do have a um, this idea that, again, the 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 teachings that are 
that are offered by many of the other denominations of 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 Christianity have been altered. Yeah. So at least that idea that 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 dispensation had been mm -hmm. changed, mm -hmm. um, I think, was an important uh, was an important concept, right, to be able to 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 take on the idea that that religion can be corrupted, that the sort of the books that are that are seen as being the author, the authoritative kind of source right. material that we take our teachings from, they, they can be tampered with and, and altered. But I think the most important thing I got out of that experience, and especially, you know, with, with, with my mom going through that was um, mm -hmm. just sort of the, the idea of there being a, 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 a one God, right? right? And that Jesus right. was not the son of God. Yeah, yeah. Right, so they, so they, they have that. Right. And, um, and, I, and I would dare say that that was part of the beginning of my journey Hmm. My eventual, my eventual arrival at, at Islam was at least mm -hmm. my being able to entertain this mm -hmm. idea, and and then have that kind of hold a place for me, yeah. And then that that kind of serve as a kind of a waypoint that that would eventually lead me again yeah. to, to Islam. Yeah, I, I already I always had like some you know a different type of respect for the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, compared to like the, the other Christians that I come across. I mean, growing up and. And we could, you know, like in our neighborhood, in the black neighborhoods, it was just like, uh, okay, well, kind of the pious Christians are the Jehovah's Witnesses. And there's a girl, yeah, celibate, you know, they, you know, they, they hope, you know, kind of they keep themselves until they get married, right, 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 right. right. That was generally the, 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 uh, the reputation that even like they would get kicked out of the, uh, the hall, like if sure. they're pregnant and things like that, you know, sure, like, yeah, oh, the, the, yeah, you would, you would yeah. be, uh, disfe yeah. disfellowshipped. Yeah, right. Yeah, you this right. fellowship. Yeah, I remember that. You know, and I met so one of my friends in high school. He was the first one, first actual Jehovah's Witness I, I had come in contact with. And so sometimes he wanted to debate with me. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, but I remember like I, I, we, I was talking about the Trinity, and so he's like, "Well, I don't believe in the Trinity." I said, "You don't believe in the Trinity?" I said, "Okay, well, he's, he said, why not?" So he says, well, "Okay, because the, you know, it's not in the Bible." I said, "Oh, it's right. not in the Bible." So he said that you know that it's not in any of the original manuscripts, so we don't believe in that stuff. Right. And so he was the very first person who actually actually you know told me that, and, and I come to learn. I said, man, that's actually interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think that's the thing. I mean, that's not a that's not a that's not a trivial, right? You know, matter. I mean, especially for one again, someone who counts themselves as being, mm -hmm. you know, f from that community of people. Yeah. Is right. and especially I think in a place like again, especially in a place like um, like New York, mm -hmm. um, and and in particular in a place like Long Island, because you have so many people that do come out of that tradition. If you're you know if you're Catholic, mm -hmm. you know if you're Irish, or you're Italian, mm -hmm. or you know you 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 are from one of those you know the European ethnics, right? That's very much an aspect of how you come up. Yeah. Is that there's 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 a belief in you know in this uh, in this idea, mm -hmm. and um, so yeah, like I said, I think I think that was a really significant aspect of mm -hmm. of my um, you know my coming to at least think about religion. Yeah, and between that and um, you know, and I and I had you know quite a few friends of mine growing up that were I mean again being in New York, it's, you know, a lot of, a lot of friends of mine were Jewish, mm -hmm. so. Um, you know, all of this was a part of the mix mm -hmm. of of my coming to at least have it have some understanding as to what a belief, <clears throat> what belief in God was comprised of. You know, yeah. and, and and again, you know, there, there are those aspects of you know, say, you know, people that may be in our families. I had I did have people in my family that were Muslim. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had uh, you know cousins of mine, mm -hmm. and then th in that kind of melange of of kind of religious belief, religious practice, you know, there, you know, there were, you know, people that were, you know, five percent nation or, you know, the more science temple mm -hmm. or the, you know, black Hebrews. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. you know, yeah, 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 you know, had that whole yeah. mix. So <laughs> yeah. it was a it's, yeah, yeah. it's a very interesting mm -hmm. uh sort of stew mm -hmm. of um you know of of at least thinking about what it means to to believe mm. in God and and practice some semblance, some 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 form of spirituality. It was a really interesting way okay. to come up. Okay, so what so what did it for you? How how did you become Muslim? <sighs> yeah, I, I'd have to say again, 
um, again, growing up in the New York of the 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. there, there, of course, is some, you're kind of getting these these seeds that are being planted into your mind. I mean, so I think I, I heard you talking before about mm -hmm. the influence of things like, um, the cultural influence of things like hip hop, yes. of, you know, and, and again, for me, because of, of um, you know, my, my, my dad's, uh, uh, involvement with the jazz and there were people in that community of course mm -hmm. that that were were um had some connection to islam mm -hmm. but i think those formative years where again being in new york at that time there was a lot of you know you had people like you know rock hymns from long island yeah um mm -hmm. you know public enemies from long island. Mm -hmm. as a matter of fact all of those great records they recorded they recorded mm -hmm. up the streets from my grandmother mm -hmm. yeah, 510 yeah. south franklin Right. Yeah. You know, that was the that was the place that did a lot of that, you know, a yeah. lot of the recordings. It was right at the end of Carolina Avenue. Which, which yeah, was, I mean, it was a different time. It's really a different yeah, time completely. For, like, for hip hop. You know, the brand well, new, yeah, the brand new is. I mean, you yeah, know, right. it'd be the Nation of Islam with five percenters. Exactly. You know, is this everybody's promoting some kind of Islam, like in right. rap, you know, it's conscious rap. And so. Right. Just, All praises due to Allah. And that's a blessing. Right. It's right, like, because, you know, quote, yeah. I mean, all of those you're kind of taking all of that stuff in, and of, and of course, there was this you know, that aspect mm -hmm. of um, you know, what, what people at the time was calling you know, consciousness, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. so that there, at least there was this awareness, this this encouraging, yeah, of kind of and people people investigating these things, mm -hmm. and I think all so all of that is being put is, is being placed into us, mm -hmm. yeah, and. You know, I had cousins of mine, like I, my, one of my mom's cousins, uh, Jamila, um, she was married to Suleiman El Hadi, who was one of the original last poets. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Right. So, um, you know, these are all folks that are, you know, kind of, a, they're, they're, a, they're very close. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't necessarily thinking at the time mm -hmm. that this was something for me, right. because I think there were aspects of Islam that just seemed to be foreign, mm -hmm. okay. right, I, that just were not. I wasn't I wasn't connecting with it. And it mm -hmm. wasn't until probably after where, where, where the search really begins in earnest is after, you know, the death of my father. My father died mm -hmm. in a car accident when I was 19. That's right. um, and I was in I was in college. It was in my just the I it was this is like January 92. <clears throat> so I'm kind of I'm getting into the second my second year of college. Mm -hmm. And it's happened during the winter break mm -hmm. of of my second year. Mm -hmm. And I think that it was it was kind of losing someone who I was that close to. I mean, right. probably at that, you know, my father was the person I, I felt closest to, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, you lose somebody that you really connect with. And I remember I remember always thinking, I, like, I really don't know what I would do if I were to lose him. Mm -hmm. And then here I and, and then here's this this situation yeah. where I'm faced with, oh, he's gone. Yeah. And I think what really. What, what really jarred me was I, I was just with him. Like literally the accident happened about a, a day or like two days before, two days after I had just been with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was this idea of kind of our, you know, being faced with your mortality. The, yeah. the line was that tenuous. Mm -hmm. Like someone's mm -hmm. here one day and then they're gone the next. Yeah. And you have no idea, mm -hmm. you know, what could be the thing that takes you out and when, yeah. It, it's to occur yeah and I, and I guess and i guess probably also like just thoughts of like okay well um where's my father now you know is there life after death you know, yeah there, right? you know. All, all all of those things begin to they become very real yeah mm -hmm. and and i think mm -hmm. that's when i started to get really mm -hmm. serious in trying to understand mm -hmm. all of these aspects of what it was to be alive you know mm -hmm. so right. Right. Mm -hmm. um so I was I was 19. Um, I'm in school. I'm studying engineering, and and I and I distinctly remember this thought that came to mind. You know, just about the only you know the only thing we could really have any certainty about, like that we can agree upon, was that we were right. born and that we we're going to die, mm -hmm. and that everything else kind of in between those two mm -hmm. bookmarks is like subject to interpretation. Right. Yeah. And what I wanted to do, and I and I didn't want to be, I didn't want to leave my understanding, kind of what was in between those two bookmarks mm -hmm. properly. Right. Um, I didn't want to leave that to chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so 
I wanted to find out, okay, well, what exactly is going on here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Because I, because, you know, you, you, you suddenly have this sense that you're on the clock. Mm -hmm. And, and so probably between, you know, 1992 and when I eventually end up meeting everybody out, out here in California, like after I moved, I moved to California in 97. Okay. June, June, July, 97. Mm -hmm. And then I met, um, you know, a, a number of people that were connected to, again, these are the, the early days of Zaytuna, right, right, probably yeah. sometime in like late 98, early 99. Okay. And and what, so, what brought you out here? I mean, what was it that brought you out here? So I, you know, I, I get my, I, I finished school, mm -hmm. um, I finished school in 95, mm -hmm. January 95. I, I get my first job out of college is um, at, a, at a research and development uh, outfit in Manchester, New Hampshire, which funnily enough, the, the trip that my father and I made before, before he had the accident was to New Hampshire. And I, and in hindsight, I remember passing by the place on that trip okay. that I eventually ended up working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, and I remember that like kind of etched in my memory. And, um, and so I, I moved it to New Hampshire. I worked up there for about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And then a guy that I'd worked with there had given my name to a recruiter, like a headhunter. And then he had um, a job in the in the South Bay in mm -hmm. San Jose, Santa Clara area that um, he wanted me to interview for. Oh, OK, so I had I had family out here. My 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 aunt, my, my dad's younger sister mm -hmm. um, lived in Oakland for, for years, mm -hmm. um, really since the 60s. And so I remember after 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 he passed and then there was another death in the family, I had come out here to visit her. And mm -hmm. I remember really liking it in the Bay. So it's like, this is probably 93, 94, 93. Mm -hmm. okay. And I remember liking it out here and, I, and trying to figure out like, you know, how I could come back out. And then I eventually was given the opportunity with this, um, when I was when I was um, offered a job uh, at a small medical device startup in the mm -hmm. South Bay. So that's what brought me out. So that's in the summer 97. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then I eventually, while I was, while I was living in San Jose and Santa Clara, I, um, I, uh, this is a funny story. I was, um, you know, I kind of, after work, I would, I was kind of messing around playing music. I would record stuff in a little four track recorder in my room, mm -hmm. uh, for the, the room in the house I was, I was renting at the time. And, um, I go to, uh, the guitar center mm -hmm. and, and, uh, in, in San Jose. And I go to the pro audio section because I'm, I was looking for a piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. And the guy that helped me at the pro audio desk is uh, it's Ennis Cannon. <laughs> 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 so it's always older brother. Mm -hmm. And literally mm -hmm. that's, that's how my, mm -hmm. my journey begins, you know, mm -hmm. to my eventually becoming Muslim mm -hmm. is I run an Ennis at a guitar center. Yeah. And okay. so he, so we, you know, we're talking and I kind of played a little something for him that I was, I was kind of messing around with mm -hmm. in my room. And then he invited me to a, a, a studio space that he had, Mm -hmm. in the south bay and literally that's where i meet everybody i know nope. like the kind of all the you know okay. the whole mm -hmm. the whole crew um okay. you know yeah. eventually i meet osama I meet, you know um you know, i'm hearing about you know uh john rodis yeah, right, right, right. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. so he's you know he's overseas studying i'm uh, mustafa davis mm -hmm. mustafa shaheed at that point Mm -hmm. uh you know mean williams like that whole that whole crew yeah, yeah i beat everybody down there and then um a lot of the folks that were connected to um the shehu the jamaat you know uh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Reeves crew yeah. that's that's literally how i meet everybody and mm -hmm. and what actually ends up um sparking my interest in islam it, it wasn't anything that they were quote unquote, trying to teach me. They didn't proselytize. Right. I just liked how they were. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I like the, I mean, what we would now say, mm -hmm. I like the suhba. Right, right, I right, just right. like being right. around them. Mm -hmm. And it was, and it was my coming to finally realize that, mm -hmm. oh, the common thread that connected yeah. all of these people was the fact that they were Muslim. Yeah, Muslim That's right. what sparked my interest in Islam. Right, right, right. That's what sparked my interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mashallah, tarakallah. Yeah, and so who did you take jihad with? <laughs> okay, so um, my shot story. It's really, it's really funny. So we had a um, sort of a an infamous gathering at, at. That's not infamous. 
Um, makes it sound like nefarious. Uh, <laughs> we had a we had a really fun gathering at Annis's mother's place in down here, you know, at the Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. And um, it was all the brothers from Oakland, mm -hmm. you know, and all you know the, the brothers that were you know connected to um, you know Sheikh Hamza and and mm -hmm. and 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 the Zaytuna. And we all had a get together on the beach at at uh, Annis's mm -hmm. mother's place near near a place. And it was that point that I, I decided, yeah, yeah I, I want to, I want to, you know, become one of these people. Mm -hmm. And I took my shahada on July 11th. This, there's a recording somewhere. We have the tape. Oh, okay. Um, on July 11th, 1999, 11 <laughs> I took my shahada in the apartment of Ilyas Abdelaziz, Ilyas mm -hmm. Beverage. Okay. And um, and I still remember the folks who were who were there. Mm -hmm. I took my hand. I took my shahada on the hand of Sayyid uh, Sayyid Mubin, Sayyid Fulak. Okay, I really got. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. say I, I did that, and I remember uh, you mm -hmm. know the Cannon Boys were there, and mm -hmm. Yusuf O'Connell, and mm -hmm. okay. and uh, uh, Muhammad uh, um, Ashraf Latif, and mm -hmm. and uh, Omar Detona, and like you know a lot of the, the, the San Diego crew, and there, the, it was that was a great night. Great Hamza great. Weinman was Hamza Weinman was there. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. Oh, you remind me. That was a really good night. Yeah. You know, and there were there were actually a lot of tears that night. Yeah, yeah. A lot of tears that night. It was a Sounds really like good a great, night. Sounded like a great day, great time. So yeah, yeah, it was beautiful. It's beautiful. Like that whole time. Yeah. I think that whole time was really special. Yeah. And I think if you know, if you, I mean, you you. You when did when did you come out here? What year? No, I didn't come into to the Bay until 2007. So I miss all that fun stuff, right? <laughs> 2000. I thought you were here earlier. No, no, no. I, we came in 2007, October of 2007. Okay. Yeah, and I had just finished up uh, my. Oh, work, Mar in Morocco. At, work at the prison. No, I finished my. Work. Oh, no. I, was work, I worked at the chaplain in the prison. I just finished. That's my right. Work. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yes. But yeah, I mean those those early. But I did visit. I did early. visit in two thousand. I did visit in two thousand. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I flew the. They flew me in from Morocco in two thousand for the Dean Intensive. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think Abdul Ben right. was there. Uh, I think Sheikh Mohammed Yaqubi, the that's Dr. right. Tofik Bolti was there. I that's translated right. for him. I, I translated for Dr. Tofik. Right? Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. So, the, so here's what's interesting about that time. Like, so the the house that I the house that I rented, I rented this house for mm. about two years. Mm. Um, I was half a block from Amul Tarif. No, okay. And I and I and again at the time I didn't know I didn't know, but it again it's like kind of there was this setup. Mm -hmm. So literally, um, so this is right around. So the second half of '99, you know, we're really. Was was very active again. Though, you know, probably within those first six months of, of my Islam, uh, this is when uh, Sheikh uh, Abdullah Al Ahmedna was here. You know, mm -hmm. Marab Al grandson. Right. right. And so he was here with Rami. You know, Rami Ansour. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Rami. Mm -hmm. um, then there was, uh, and I remember, this was a it was a really crazy time. I remember when, you know, Habib Ali Al Jifri had come. This is like fall of ninety nine. Mm -hmm. I remember when uh, this is when, you know, during the time that uh, Dr. Omar, you know, comes yeah. back from, you know, from being overseas, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, Sheikh, Mah Sheikh Muhammad Yaqubi first comes, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Abdullah Al Qadi comes, mm -hmm. um, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Amr Abdul son. Yeah, son. Yeah. Uh, I remember when Sheikh uh, uh, Muhammad uh, Didu. You know, mm -hmm. when he came to, mm -hmm. to the Bay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there were all of these folks. Mm -hmm. And 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 I remember at the time, I'm I'm just thinking, like, I'm just thinking it's normal. And I'm thinking, oh, everybody, you know, everybody has no, a no, chance. No. To, you you know, guys have a privilege. Chance. You guys, that's a special privilege. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> it was, and, and, and it wasn't, you know, and I remember, you actually the person who remember telling us this. I mean, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 Sheikh, uh, uh, you remember uh, uh, Anwar Muhammad? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I remember he, <laughs> so I remember he came out, yeah, yeah. and we did a thing with him, and you know Ibrahim. Ibrahim uh, travels with him. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Travels, yeah. Right, his son, yeah. Yeah, no, no. Ibrahim is. He was like part of his. Oh, like, Ibrahim Jamaldin. Yeah, yeah, Ibrahim Jamaldin. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So we did a we did a thing down in UCLA. Mm. Um, you know, this is probably, mm. you know, probably spring, maybe of 01. 
Mm-hmm. And and he used to and they used to just like talk about how we had, you know, we lived in this bubble, you know, the Bay Area bubble. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um and again, I, I think it wasn't until years later that that it it really begins to dawn on us that you know we we did have this really I think fairly unique set of circumstances yeah, that yeah, allowed totally. for us to you know to have all this I, I mean like I live with I live with um so this is like around 99 New Year's 99 2000 I I, I move out of the house that I'm renting and I moved into Amu Tarif's house because because mm. he he ends up leaving with his family mm-hmm. and that's when I had a chance to live with Sheikh Hathri mm-hmm, okay for like you know, for several months, mm-hmm. and and also uh, Sheikhna bin Bega, because because mm-hmm. so Sheikh Abdullah had come, mm-hmm. and then Sheikhna stayed, mm-hmm. and then Sheikhna ends up being you know my that's one of my roommates. Yeah, right. So <laughs> it was yeah, it was an amazing time, and I think it was that just kind of verified, mm-hmm. you know, the the fact that you know my feeling about this mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. was you know was was mm-hmm. was right. You know, right. That's, that's, that's yeah. It's, it's good. I mean, you mentioned all this because, like, I think what it does for um, not only for the audience but for me too. It just you can sort of see like your your intellectual pedigree, right, in Islam, right. You know, in other words, sort of how it takes form. You know, who you the connections, who you're connected to, all the people you know, uh, you've learned from. Because it's not only like your worldly knowledge. We would call it, you know. You know, you know what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, it's, I you know, saying. Semantics, it's semantics, yeah. You know, worldly knowledge, you, yeah, know, you, knowledge, you know that um that you know. So it's not like okay, you're just only you went to a university, you studied yeah. something, but actually you got some grounding, yeah, some proper uh, grounding in Islamic theology among other yeah. things, right? You know, while yeah, you know, while you were here in the Bay after you became Muslim, you know. sure, sure. I mean, I, I think what was great about that time was you know a lot of the the. Mm-hmm those early translations that Sheikh Hamza was doing, mm-hmm. you know, like Ibn Asher yeah. and al Akhtari, right. And uh, I remember us doing some of um, mm-hmm. the Risala of uh, Ibn Abi Zayd al Karwaini. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. a lot of those texts, mm-hmm. um, you know, many of the early um, uh, Islamic text projects, um, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly, the, the 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 publishing of like you know breaking the two desires and the right. and the um you know and the uh, uh, Imam Ghazali's uh, you know death and the rem- remembrance of the afterlife yeah. that was a big that was actually a big one for me right. yeah I remember early on I remember reading that early on mm-hmm. and I think a lot of that had to do with you know my you know my experience and again losing you know losing people yeah. that were close to me yeah. and me trying to get some clarity about mm-hmm. again. Just what happens? Yeah, right, right. You know, just trying to get an explanation. Yeah. Um, I remember early on seeing, um, you know, when the the Lives of Man was first, uh, mm-hmm. those early publishings. You know, the Lives of Man, that mm-hmm. text from mm-hmm. Imam Al Haddad. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Keys to the Garden, like a lot of those early books. The 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 Al Baz uh, publications, um, translations of uh, of uh, Sheikh um, uh, Abdul Qadir Al Jilani. You know, those right. texts, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, just a lot of. I mean, we were just like yeah. sponges yeah. taking sponges, all that stuff right. in, absorbing like, it so much, right? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of those translations mm-hmm. that that Sheikh, uh, that uh, Muhammad Sharif did. You know, yeah, right. See, Muhammad Sharif, right. Those are amazing yeah. books. Like all mm-hmm. that, all that yeah. stuff from uh, you know from the Sheikh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Really, really yeah. important. Really yeah. important texts. Yeah. And um, and so we really had uh. Just an amazing opportunity to learn from from people that were connected to to, to that tradition, mm-hmm. and it and it really affected us. It really yeah. impacted us. Yeah, mashallah. Yeah, this that's really really beautiful. Um, I want to shift gears a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so sure. um, I wanted to come to um, you have an article that you wrote for Yafin Institute. <laughs> yeah, back in 2022, it was entitled "Saving Truth and Beauty." Yep. destruction of nature and the Islamic solution. Yes. I wanted to just read a, you know, a passage, you know, you know I mean, as we go through, I'm, it may be more than one passage that I'll read Please. throughout the, the interview. Right. So at the beginning of this particular article, you say history is strewn with, uh, history is strewn with cat- catastrophes rooted in the application of erroneous cosmological and epistemological assumptions and a failure to properly translate what is being perceived into the appropriate responses to the world and the reality humans find themselves occupying. This delusional misunderstanding of oneself and one's surroundings produces repeatable and predictable 
consequences. Now, now I, I think it's really a beautiful way to kind of start this because you're, you know, okay, you're talking about the issue of, okay, the destruction of nature, the Islamic solution. And, and, and that's one thing, uh, you know, I think that that particular statement about how quite often we can make a mistake and we can misdiagnose, right? I mean, misdiagnose, right? The problem, right? And then, of course, if we've misdiagnosed the problem, then we can offer the wrong solutions to right. it. Right, right, you know? exactly. So, like, there's a, uh, a maxim in in, um, in in logic, you know, at hukm al shay' far'un an tasawwur which fundamentally means that the, the judgment you make about something itself is the consequence of the way that okay. you conceptualize it, right? So, so you misconceive it, then you're going to pass the wrong judgment about the thing, you know, and you're going to offer the wrong solution, right? right. And I think that that in itself is a universal, you know, sort of to everything, scientific, you know, even religious as well, right? When it comes to fiqh as well, right? You know, quite often people will have a fiqh position, you know, but they themselves, they may not have all the, the details necessary to actually make the proper judgment about something, right? Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. So, so, yeah, so that was... I would start there, but then, like you further, you go on, you continue, and you mention to say in his book, "Collapse: How Societies Choose to Fail or Succeed." Dr. Jarrett Diamond identifies five factors that have historically contributed to civilizational collapse: climate change, hostile neighbors, collapse of essential trading partners, environmental problems, and failure to adapt to environmental issues. He also lists 12 environmental problems facing mankind today, mm -hmm. the first eight of which have historically contributed to the collapse of past societies. Mm -hmm. One, deforestation and habitat destruction. Mm -hmm. Two, soil problems, in parentheses, erosion, salinization, and soil fertility losses. Mm -hmm. Three, water management problems. Four, overhunting. Five, overfishing. Six, effects of introduced invasive species on that on native species seven overpopulation and eight increased per capita amp impact of people mm -hmm. furthermore he says four new factors may contribute to the weakening and collapse of present and future societies mm -hmm. one anthropogenic climate change two accumulation of toxins in the environment three energy sources and four full human utilization of the earth's uh photosynthetic uh, capacity right now, of course, I mean, you you know, a lot of these terms have to be explained, you know, but, right? Yeah, I thought that was a, a good sort of introduction and sort of summary of like the challenges that we face. Of course, as Muslims, um, we have the challenge, of course, of of being the stewards, you know, at least that we, we, we're supposed to believe that human beings are the stewards, and the but and as Muslims who are supposed to be leading hu humanity, right? You know, that we have uh, a certain uh, obligation to not only help to alleviate the damage that people have done, but also to make sure that we fully understand what's happening. And then when solutions are offered, you know, that we choose the right solutions. I mean, yeah, I mean, you like to, would you, is there any particular points there you like to sort of emphasize or? You know, or yeah, uh, I mean, one of the things I often talk about when, mm -hmm. when I, um, you know, when I when I sort of covering these, mm -hmm. you know, these 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 topics is that, you know, everything that's described mm -hmm. is a is is rooted in a problematic behavior mm -hmm. and, and not technology. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the, the point I often make to people is that all all technology does is it just amplifies behavior, mm -hmm. whether the behavior is good or bad. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the what what has to be addressed and what has to be analyzed is what is the what are these activities that are being mm -hmm. um, that are being engaged in and that are fueled by a certain way of looking at the world or sort of understanding or translating what we mm -hmm. what we are led to believe the world is. Yes. Right. right. And so depending on how we are translating kind of this experience that we're having, then that's going to lead us, you know, down a, a you know, depending on depending on how that's being interpreted. It's going to lead us down a, 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 a certain path. So, for example, you know, I mean, most, 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 the, the, you know, the human species has um, found these different strategies to kind of settle, settle upon different ways in which to provision itself, mm -hmm. you know, to provide, to provide itself and sort of those that are around them mm -hmm. with the things that they need in order to live, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, life. 
So there are these products and services that we need in order to live what would one what one would qualify as being a decent life. Yeah. Um, but the way in which those products and services are provided are going to have a certain effect. Right. And mm-hmm. so if 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 there's a belief that, for instance, um, you live in a world of scarcity. Yes. Then then you will have a tendency to engage in behaviors that lead one to hoard, mm-hmm. that lead one to um, again be destructive, mm-hmm. uh, and that you know I got to get mine before you know anybody you know before someone else gets it because right. it's not enough for all of us. Right. Right. Or you have you're of the belief that you live in a world where there's more than enough for everyone. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And then that's going to lead you down a certain path. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And so. So depending on on how, again, you are interpreting the nature of the place that you live in, right. you have these very different, you know, these very different uh, roads that you're going to traverse. Now, the reason mm-hmm. why I, I, I kind of, the, you know, the title actually isn't, the, that, that, that title isn't actually mine. The original, oh. ti- the original title oh. of the article was um, Saving Truth and Be- Beauty, uh, Human Reckoning and Nature's Destruction. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> that was that was actually the original <laughs> title. I just uh-huh. think I think probably the you know the the Joaquin Mark probably thought it was too wordy. Maybe that was well, too wordy. I think they just thought it might have been a bit too dark. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so, that, yeah. but I think the point mm-hmm. about okay, well, where does the solution lie? Mm-hmm. And and for me, I think you know what I wanted to explain was well, part of positing a solution is is correcting the cognitive frame yeah right right to solve right yeah yeah to, to exactly right yeah yeah so it's like okay well what is the what is the frame what is the cognitive frame what is the worldview mm-hmm. that is informing yeah how we're going about doing things in the world yeah. right right and yeah. and that's really what i wanted to examine and yeah. that there are there are a certain set of assumptions mm. right that that have to be kind of accounted for and you mm-hmm. have to see whether or not the assumptions are actually valid right right and then once the once you you settled upon mm-hmm. like the validity of the assumptions mm-hmm. then you have these you know these ways these means and these yeah. ends right. that are you know that are then you know uh identified and and when you put all of those things together mm-hmm. that's strategy yeah so yeah. What, so ultimately we have to figure out mm-hmm. what is the strategy yeah. that is being settled upon that would mm-hmm. allow for the human being to live in the world in a manner that mm-hmm. not only is beneficial for itself, but is also kind of mutually beneficial for the place that they are occupying. Yeah, no, that's that's extremely important. I mean, I, I totally agree with that. I, I think it's interesting when we consider like the debates about climate change in particular, yes. you know, and of course, uh, you know, I have to kind of tread lightly here because, uh, you know, the YouTube uh, <laughs> algorithm. And the, no, you, you know, we, yeah. we're talking about this before. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, we already said climate change more than once, you know, I mean, so like as long as we're not saying the things that they don't want us to say about climate yeah. change, I think we should be OK. Right. But. But like you know, when it's in the debate, you know, you have like these sort of extremes, right? You know, so one yeah, extreme, yeah, sure, okay, sure. Well, listen, okay, sure. Um, like you said, like you know, okay, one one group of people, like you know, they have this idea of the 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 cup is the glass is half full, half full. right, right. <laughs> right. You know, and they're actually very powerful people who feel this way, sure, uh, for whatever reason. I don't know if it's sure. genuine. I don't know if they just sincerely feel that way or they just you know whatever it is. You know, yeah. they're just evil people, people, right? You know, but other words, they say, well, they, their suggestions are, okay, well, we need to uh, produce massive austerity measures. We need to even, like, reduce the population. Right. Like, necessary. Right. You know, we can do it through, listen, we're going to encourage, like, warfare. Of course, sure. you know, we know the theory is conspiracy. Yeah, we, you know? yeah, we all I mean, And there's truth to it. There's truth to a lot of us. So, you know, the war, we do it through, uh, through drugs. We do it yeah. through... You know, abortion. Sure. We through in promoting like homosexuality. We through yeah. promoting like transgenderism. Yeah. Whatever is what we do it by trying to, of course, you know, we promoting even individualism, like extreme individualism, to sure. extent, like you know, the breakup of the, of the family. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the culture wars, all those things like that. Anything that's going to like keep the the numbers down. You know, so that's like one perspective. It seems like you know, you know that, and there are other things going along with that. Uh, so otherwise, it's, instead of there, instead of I mean, go throughout our history, as we know, like you know that we've we've been afflicted by involuntary population decrease, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? In other words, you know, yeah. A lot. That's a, a good lot. way of put. That's a good way of putting it. 
<laughs> right, right, yeah. It's, yeah uh, I mean, sometimes Allah, you know, he just dist he destroys us. You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. He, he did it himself, right? You know, absolutely. Then other times there were because of we did things, and then all of a sudden, okay, warfare, those type of things, right? Yeah. You know, but then you know, when you have it, this, the half the the glasses half full, uh, that particular sector of society of the, of the elite, you know, and saying that you know they want to do the voluntary version of it. You know, they want to act as God. You know, so you know. But then on the other hand, you have like people say, oh no, no, that that it's the glass is half full and w whatever threat there may be to the environment or to, you know, or, or, or supposed by what we call, so climate change and anything, you know, is, is something it's negligible because we always can, you know, we can adjust, right. I mean, that's what yeah. human beings have done. Right. You know, and so we just, you know, just more technology, we create more technology and it will, it will make things better. And we continue to, to act in the same way, we continue to continue to be hyper consumers, et cetera, right. et cetera, et cetera. Right. right. You know, so and uh and of course, I mean, like I said, I post a lot of things, you know, which you know have I guess you'd say, you know, probably would make people think that, you know, that I don't acknowledge anything um negative about the envir environmental collapse, right? You know, and that's not so much, and that's really not my position, right? I, I don't I don't say that okay, that 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 Muslims should not be concerned or people should not be concerned with the environment. It's just that I understand that when, when, when science itself is appropriated by government, sure, by politicians, right, by yes. corporations, right, yep. you know, in the same way that if religion is appropriated by governments and corporations, that that in itself now gives us less reason to trust right. a lot of that, the information that it, comes out. It gives you it gives you pause, and yes. I think rightfully yes. so. Yes. That you have you have to question the motives. So I think so I think on that account, yeah, that is I think that that um yeah. that sensibility yeah is totally called for. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. e even if we're not necessarily certain mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. you know what the again, what the solution is. Yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. think the fact that you know the hack, you know, it kind of raises your hackles is mm -hmm. yeah, that is totally in order. Because yeah. I think there's enough in the way of empirical evidence mm -hmm. to lend credence to the idea that, you know. To just, just trust that these people are gonna—they right. have our best interest at heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just yeah. simply isn't the case. Right. You, know, you just right. have to be. I mean, we just went through. We just went through an episode, you know, from 2020 <laughs> up until now, and everything, which demonstrated that these people can't be trusted, right? You know, I mean, a lot of people were were, were awakened, you know, by the realization that they were tricked. You know, there's a massive psyop. You know, so. With regard to you know what what happened you know with the infection and the proposed remedies and you know and a lot of people were adversely affected by those so-called remedies um, you know you know heart attack stroke cancer etc I mean um, and it's like okay you know they told us that stuff things were safe and effective and they turned out not to be safe they actually didn't have any real data on it they lied to everyone uh, you know and it was like it was this it was a big payday. For these, Did, uh, didn't your brother your brother pass? Didn't he? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, brother, right, yeah, right. You know, but but what a lot of people don't understand about my brother passing, Rahimullah, is that is that he didn't pass. I would say that you know I don't believe that he passed because of the so called infection. Mm. I think what killed him were the hospital protocols. Right, it what yeah. killed him, right? yeah. because realistically, what happened was that um, the last time I spoke to him. Last time I spoke to him, he said to me, oh, "I feel a lot better, right? Mm. I, think, I think they're going to send me home uh, to to quarantine at home, right? Because mm. he went into the hospital, he had trouble breathing. They diagnosed him with pneumonia. Mm. Uh, you know, he was very unhealthy, right? To begin mm. with, you know, very old, much overweight, had mm. you know, was obese, right? Massively mm. obese, you know, and you know, um, and um, he had some other problems, like just medical problems in general. Even though he's a nurse, right? So." Yeah. So, you know, he went in because of breathing problems. They said, okay, you have pneumonia, but they forced him to be quarantined from other, other patients. And then, like I said, the last time I spoke to him, he said he felt better. You know, so I thought, okay, they're going to send him home. You know, the next day, that was it. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't reach him anymore. Super. Right. right. Yeah, I didn't realize that. And what they had did, what they did was that they intubated him. They intubated him mm. and they sedated him on top mm. of him. Right. And and I didn't realize until maybe a year later, because there was an article that came out that actually stated that during the earlier days and months of the pandemic, that doctors intentionally were actually intubating patients because they were afraid, they were afraid that 
they um, that they would it would spread throughout the hospital, and then they wouldn't have any staff, you know, right. to help out when when people actually came in for things. So they would say, okay, well, let's put them under, let's sedate them and, and intubate them, right? So, so, um, so, 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 in other words, so the the question of whether or not uh, the cause of my brother's death was COVID. Yeah, in one sense, yes. In another sense, yeah, I feel like no, it wasn't. Yes. Yeah, that, that yeah. Guy, I understand. I understand. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And especially when you consider again during that time, this is when they were demonizing certain types of uh, treatments. Right. Yeah. You know, doctors yeah. were being told that they can't treat with certain types of things, which really yeah. didn't make any sense to me. Right. You know. So again, like the big the psyop. You know, they were telling people that. You know, you wait until you can't breathe. You know, you're having trouble breathing to go to the emergency room, right? You sure. Know? Yeah. Any rate, you know, I don't want to spend too much time in there because, like, I don't want to like get flagged, right? You know, no, but, I, no, I, right, I understand. Right. I understand. But, but, I, but I think, I think yeah, the point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the point is interesting. So, so some of the again, some yeah. of the issues that you just raised. So, for example, yeah, yeah. like what what Doctor um, what Doctor Diamond was pointing to, for example. Um, the anthropogenic climate change part mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how it connects to some of the, the modes of failure that he mentions. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that um, you'll hear, you know, some people speak to, especially mm -hmm. with, instead of having this whole big emphasis on carbon, for example. Yes, right. Like, well, actually one of the more, one of the mm -hmm. actually more, even more significant mm -hmm. greenhouse gas is, right. is water vapor. Right. Mm -hmm. And and not only water vapor, but but things like um, nitrous oxide, which is mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. which which actually has I think it's something on the order of three I think it's three hundred times the heat trapping capacity of mm -hmm. carbon, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. which is a it's a product of uh, mm -hmm. the use of synthetic fertilizers because mm -hmm. um, in, in agriculture because it's, all, all of that is made from uh, uh, you know not either natural gas and then a lot of the mm -hmm. The agricultural chemicals are are actually derived from from uh, from fossil fuels, uh, yeah. from petroleum. Mm -hmm. the, but the um, I should say, but the uh, the the part about the the water vapor and then how that connects to mm -hmm. um, some of the other modes of failure that he mentions of civilizational collapse, right? So he mm -hmm. mentions deforestation and habitat mm -hmm. destruction, mm -hmm. uh, soil problems, and and then um, uh, water problems. Mm -hmm. Well, th of those top three mm -hmm. factors, two of them. Just to give a brief ex explanation, two of them involve two of the largest terrestrial storages of carbon on the planet, right. which mm -hmm. would be terrestrial plants and soils. Mm -hmm. So the problem is when you get to the point where, you know, you have a planet that increasingly is losing its vegetative co cover, mm -hmm. and it's also losing its ability to have viable soils, mm -hmm. and and most notably when soils degrade, they also they also lose carbon. Right, right? carbon actually oxidizes. And then it begins to go into the atmosphere. Where increasingly, what's happening is, and it's and this is very much a Quranic idea, mm -hmm. you you are you are um, you are disrupting the balance. Yes, right, mm -hmm. right. And so, th so there's carbon that should be mm -hmm. in certain places, mm -hmm. in right. certain quantities, mm -hmm. but because we're removing yeah. certain storages or the viability of certain storages from the equation, yeah. the balance is thrown off. Yeah, so then you point. have. Yeah. More carbon in the atmosphere, mm -hmm. you have more carbon in the oceans. What happens mm -hmm. when you have too much carbon in the ocean? Mm -hmm. It acidifies, right? Mm -hmm. Carbonic acid, right? Mm -hmm. You know, throws off the pH, and then you mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. you know problems with dead fish and and mm -hmm. and, and bleaching a coral. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also mm -hmm. because you've lost you've lost the ability to sustain vegetative life, yeah. then that actually that actually throws off your ability to cycle water. Yeah. Right. It also throws off the, the, the mm. sort of the conversation that takes place between the ground and the atmosphere mm. in the form of water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the ability of, of soils to be able to either store water or store carbon. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is thrown off. And mm. so these dynamics, these in, really what their energy dynamics, yeah. um, they're completely, they're totally out of whack. Mm -hmm. And so this is where you begin to see some of this kind of anomalous behavior with you know with weather um you know with heat and cold mm -hmm. with the circulation of oceans yeah. it's because these things that have been put into place mm -hmm. to yeah. help us to continue the um, the proper functioning of of, right. of the dynamics of weather and of, and of mm -hmm. atmospheric energy and all these things the terrestrial uh, energies the biogeochemical cycles we've lost all of those terrestrial organs that maintains that and mm -hmm. then this is where the balance is disrupted. 
Yeah. Well, like, I think, yeah, that's, that's, I, I think that that particular perspective really has to be mainstreamed. I mean, I, that yeah. could, because I, I haven't heard it like articulated that way before, you know, because, because up to this point, largely what you hear is just a massive demonization of carbon. Right. 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 It, it's right. Like, it's, yeah. The demon. Yeah. Carbon's a good thing. You know, carbon, right. like, you know, we are carbon based life forms. Right. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's, yeah. So it's like, you know, I actually I saw a video, um, I think it was like a, a month ago, and Bill Gates, somebody asked him about planting trees. He's like, please, I'm not, that's, that's, that's a foolish thing to do. Said, well, <laughs> why, why would, why would planting trees be a foolish thing to do if, if trees, they consume carbon, right? Right. right. They, right. they cycle carbon. They right. cycle well, yeah, carbon. whatever, yeah. you know, because yeah, so they cycle it. So I'm, I'm just like, okay, well, you know, they give us oxygen and, you know, right. so like, and one of the things you mentioned was that before, before, before station, right. You know, that it, yeah. that's happening. So that was one of the things that's led to the civilizational collapse. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So it would think, okay, well, plant more trees, you know, we want to bring the forest back. Right. You know, so, so, so again, I was like, it's because you have those type of like, you know, um, public statements by people, these, these wealthy people, right. Who have yeah. all this power. Right. Sure. Yeah, and they have these interests, you know, because he's in, he's into, he's investing in the vaccines, he's investing into, you understand, you know, he's got, he's got a massive sea vault above yeah, the Arctic right. Right. <laughs> massive. So, like, yeah. what's that about? Yeah. Right. So, so it's, um, it's, 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 you know, so and that's the type of stuff that kind of puts, put, you know, it turns me off, you know, so when sure. people hear people talking about, oh my God, you know, climate change, it's like, oh, well, sure. yeah, here we go again, right? You know, but, but again, when you're talking about, okay, well, the balance itself has been offset. That's what, yeah. I mean, it's like, now that makes honest. to me is like I can relate to that. And I'm saying, okay, yeah. yeah, then that makes sense. You know, that I mean, it makes logical sense. I don't know yes. if that's real. You know better than I do. But I'm just like, okay, well, yeah, okay, that's a, a persuasive sort of argument at that point. You know, that uh, as opposed to okay, well, oh my God, we have to, we have to reduce carbon, uh, you know, by killing a bunch of animals and a bunch of people. <laughs> uh, <and> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they don't say it most of all the time, often like just like that expressly, you know. But it's very right. clear. It's, it's very clear that that's like part of the plan. It's like, yeah. well, kill off all because people they let they you know they let off let off carbon, right? You know, and it's like that, that's part of it. And then we our technology drive cars and all these other things a lot of hyper consumer consumerism. And I understand sure. that. I understand that concern of hyper consumerism, right? Yeah. You know, but, so that's like one thing. In, I think part of your your paper too. You talked about the importance of gratitude. Absolutely. Like, right. You know, the, the being content with what we have, you know, and promoting that particular value in society, that might go a long way as well. But but also the 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 I think the point that I was trying to also get people to think about mm -hmm. in, in the piece was, OK, as a practical matter, what what does gratitude look like mm -hmm. as a, as a, again, as as translated into behavior? Yeah. And this is where I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I cite the, the ayah in, in Surat al-Isra about, mm -hmm. you know, okay, well, what's the opposite of that, right? We have, mm -hmm. you know, verily the, the squanderers, the mubedirin, yeah, yeah. are the, are the, bro are the brothers shelf. of the shell team, mm -hmm. which, is, right. which is an amazing ayah. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's that, it's, it's this behavior of wasting mm -hmm. is, is sort of the hallmark of what it is to be, mm -hmm. un to be ungrateful. To be an ingrate, and mm -hmm. that is it's ingratitude mm -hmm. that puts one in the same kind of familial group as demons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. So if mm -hmm. if if to squander mm -hmm. kind of the gift that we've been given makes one from the kin of demons, mm -hmm. then yeah. what does gratitude look like? Yes. Right. Yeah. So what is the opposite of wastefulness? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so and so mm -hmm. I've kind of. One of the things I try to get folks to think about was, okay, well, instead of wasting what it is that we've been gifted, mm -hmm. what if we're able to take what we're what we're given and we can make it better? Yeah. We can make it more right. than right. what it was that we were given it. We kind mm -hmm. of we kind of optimize or maximize mm -hmm. or make the most of mm -hmm. the gifts that we're given. That's yeah. what we, what what would be. Uh, I think qualify as gratitude because the law tells us in in Salat Ibrahim, right? Yeah, right. It very, if if you are grateful, I will grant you increase. Yeah, as he right? Mm -hmm. Right, but if you are ungrateful, yeah, my punishment is severe. That's right, exactly. Yeah. And what's mm -hmm. the and what and what and what is the punishment? You mm -hmm. cut off. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, you mm -hmm. cut off. Mm -hmm. And so, 
ultimately as how do we how do we put on display as again a practical matter mm. how do we show our gratitude and then ultimately how do we become communities mm -hmm. that are based in gratitude yes right right mm -hmm. yeah i want to share another quote like so so the, on this on this line of thinking so you, you say in your your article you say the operational logic of modern economies yeah. thus demands you, you were talking about you know the issue of uh, of course uh um I forget exactly what you're criticizing at this point, but you, but you have the operational logic of modern economies thus demands yes. ever expanding consumption of products right. and services. Yeah. Uh, if consumers became their own producers of goods, either as individuals or communities, consumer based economies would crater. Yeah. This system is logically suspect and ethically bankrupt. According to modern economies, taking responsibility for our own lives and that of our community value. So that is very powerful. I think it's very powerful. Very powerful. I think it's very powerful. Solution based response. Okay, okay, well, this is happening. You know, we need to happening. You know, we need to. And I think that the more we're divorced from like nature. Yeah. From like nature. Yeah. It's just unaware. We don't know really what's happening. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's absolutely true. And, and I. No, that's absolutely true. And and I she and I we, we started uh something called the uh something called the a concept that he developed um over fifteen years ago. He developed um over fifteen years ago tradition. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we, we put a major emphasis on is this major emphasis on is this yeah. And 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 what a community is really comprised of again mm -hmm. as a practical matter, mm -hmm. and so so communities mm -hmm. are are really they're really made up of people that are they agree they're on one accord in terms of they have an intentionality about where it is that they're heading, mm -hmm. and they're investing in one another, mm -hmm. in in sort of acting in the best interest of not only all of the people that are a part of the community mm -hmm. such that. Mm -hmm. They're creating this interdependence mm -hmm. between the the individuals that make it up, but the community itself mm -hmm. becomes a benefit to whoever encounters it, mm -hmm. right? And part of that, part mm -hmm. of the, the 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 that that communal ethos is really about creating um, what I like to call a network of mutual concern, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Where I'm not just concerned about me, no. like I'm concerned about you, because yeah. I have an understanding that your well-being ultimately benefits me. Yes, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, and that if everybody kind of has this attitude, mm -hmm. and not only does it extend to the, the people that are part of the community, but it also mm -hmm. extends to the place yeah. where you are, where the mm -hmm. place itself benefits mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. having all of these people there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if this is an attitude that can be adopted and can be, again, operationalized, then, you you're you're able to create again a world of abundance no. and the abundance is a product of our being provisioners mm -hmm. right of our being providers of our of no. our being producers as opposed to consumers yes right right, right. and and from this that's mm -hmm. where you have this again this world of plentitude that's able yeah. to no, that's you know, powerful. Build yeah no that's really powerful i mean yeah. it's just again the mindset you know that we're so accustomed to consuming right and right. just you know buying from other people as opposed to like you know producing you know we want to yeah. give back right you know that that in itself would change so much you know but it also would affect and cause the current system to crash that's and that's, that's and why... therein lies the, yeah therein <laughs> lies the issue is that yeah, yeah, it yeah. is that you have people that are that are able to do for themselves yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right they're not it's not being outsourced to somebody else to like take mm -hmm. care of that responsibility mm -hmm. they're able to do for themselves mm -hmm. and in be and in having the capacity to do for yourself Mm -hmm. You kind of have the right of refusal. Yes. Right. right. You could, like someone could offer you something. And you say, yeah. you know what? I, I thank you, but mm -hmm. I'm good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> how right. about you take what is it? How about how about mm -hmm. I can I can offer you something? Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Right. So you're not in a position. You're not in a position to where um, I mean, you're not captured. Yeah. Right. And I think as as and I think to a certain extent, mm -hmm. people have to sort of see the degree to which. Mm -hmm. And only operating in the world as a consumer, how you're basically captured. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like our GDP, like the U.S. is um, is based upon 
I mean, we're we're a consumer based society. About ninety seven exactly. percent of our GDP is like right. you know the just consumerism. Right. You know, it's not based upon production of products and things right. like that. Um, and uh, and I, I guess it will. Well, not I guess, but but I, but I I believe you know I I, I can say I know perhaps you know is that you know you have to alter people's ideas about what it means to be wealthy as well. Right. Yeah. Oh, sure. Know, right. Absolutely. So. He asked the average person, okay, well, what does it mean to be wealthy? They're going to have a bunch of money, a bunch of cash. Yeah. But like when you understand like what the nature of wealth is, you say, well, wealth is, okay, I have food. I have furniture. I have clothing. I have a home. I have land. I have livestock. I have, you know, that's r- real wealth because that's what you use that money for. Your cash Absolutely. is not what makes you wealthy, right? You know, no. right? And it's interesting that in Zakat, the Zakat is due on, you know, real wealth, right? You know, yeah. so it's, I mean, it's gold, silver, you know, livestock, farm produce. I mean, and and you know, just to get people just to change their minds, change their mindset. That, that, that I think that that in itself will go a long way. And then you also try to rid yourself of debt. That's the other right. thing as well, right? right? You know, so long term debt, short term. You know, it's like okay, what you have when you're self sufficient, right? You know, and 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 within a community, like you talk about as sure. well, right? Not as an individual, but within a community, yeah. Then. There's little that anyone can do to enslave you, to control you, right? You know, because you say, hey, well, all my needs are taken care of. I have a well, right. I have, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know. it's that you, you become that you're not, you're not compromised. Yes, right. In, in, yeah. in this, you know, your, or your, your tendency mm. or, or your susceptibility mm-hmm. to being compromised yes. in the ways that you just mentioned. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're much less, mm-hmm. it's much right. less likely to happen. Mm-hmm. Because all of the all mm-hmm. of the different ways in which you could be compromised, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's just simply kind of those avenues have been kind of blocked or cut off, right? right? Because right. you're mm-hmm. able to do for yourself, and mm-hmm. you're able to do for you know for the members of your community, mm-hmm. you're able to do for the people that you're responsible for, mm-hmm. and 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 there's a willingness to do that, and it's and it's and it's reciprocated. Yes, right, right, yeah. and that that's the funny. thing. And and mm-hmm. therein lies the problem mm-hmm. with I mean all of the like kind of some of the things we had mentioned mm-hmm. earlier, mm-hmm. Um, and I think in particular the tendency for like especially the 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 emphasis placed on kind of individuality, mm-hmm. right? right, and right. and sort of this atomization, right, exactly. of of, of, mm-hmm. of the society, especially mm-hmm. one that is, mm-hmm. um, you know, it puts this undue weight on people operating in the world as individuals and mm-hmm. that's the yeah. most and that's the greatest freedom you can have mm-hmm. right? yeah. it's personal freedom mm-hmm. to express yourself as an individual mm-hmm. well it, it it also undermines one's uh uh ability mm-hmm. or 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 at least the possibility of seeing that your individuality is actually of more um use mm-hmm. in in kind of investing that in the creation of community like yeah. you do have this ability, this power to to express yourself within that context, mm-hmm. as opposed to like you being cut off to everybody, and that you don't have to worry about anybody else, and that mm-hmm. that's kind of somehow going to burden burden you and yeah. prevent you from yeah. being able to to kind of do this, you know, do do this this thing, you know, that is seen as being kind of the the the, the pinnacle mm-hmm. of of what it means to live in a, in a free society, right? right? right. Express yourself mm-hmm. as an individual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we will wind down a little bit, but, but, but I wanted to, you know, shift a little bit to, um, well, not a little bit, just shift to uh, the question of of whether or not um, you feel that there are certain individual personalities uh, who, who, who deserve more attention, you know, people from the past, people in the present that you think that, you know, others uh, should... Uh, could benefit more from and and, and yeah. really need to hear more from. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I, I mentioned him just a second ago, but um, I'm I am a massive fan hmm. of um, of my colleague uh, and, and and partner in um, in uh, this work that we're doing through the IRL, the the, the um, Institute for Regenerative Livelihoods, uh, Dr. Adi Setia. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Dr. Mm-hmm. Adi uh, mm-hmm. is a long time was a long time student of uh, mm-hmm. Professor Muhammad Akib al Atas. So he's, he's a Malaysian Malaysian uh, mm-hmm. scholar academic um, mm-hmm. who I I think is doing just really amazing work. I think groundbreaking mm-hmm. work mm-hmm. in his kind of reimagining um, or recasting um, 
you know, the whole uh, concept and, and understanding of, of what Mu'amala is and economy. But mm -hmm. again, through as seen through the lens that that is rooted in our tradition. Mm -hmm. And I think the work that he's been been doing and there are other there are other folks that are also affiliated, but he's really the major driver here. Mm -hmm. I, I think it deserves mm -hmm. um, so much more attention than it's than it's gotten, because I mm -hmm. think everything that we've been talking about mm -hmm. is is um, like that. I think for me, conceptually, intellectually, mm -hmm. um, in terms of a framework, that's the glue, mm -hmm. like that's the mm -hmm. skeleton that mm -hmm. is able to connect all of these these dots all of these different parts mm -hmm. it's it's really in in this framework that mm -hmm. you know that he's developed and uh it's 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 really powerfully articulated i think very clearly presented mm -hmm. and it deserves so much more attention because i think it's going to be extremely important for us mm -hmm. in being able to to create the kinds of communities that i think we need mm -hmm. and we're going to need yes going yeah. forward yeah, yeah, because uh, again, there's a lot going on in the world that most people don't re realize. No. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. So that's Dr. Ali Sati, you say, Dr. Adi, Dr. Adi, Adi, Adi. Dr. Adi, yeah. Adi Sati. Yeah. And so, yeah. and I, so I, I'm, I'm assuming he has a website or at least absolutely. Right. Okay. So if you go to, it's the website is IRL Economy. Literally, it's I R L E C O N O M Y dot O R G. Mm -hmm. IRL economy. And if you just, or if you look up Institute for Regenerative Livelihoods, mm -hmm. you'll find a lot of um, the published work, uh, you know, a lot of his papers, you know, some of the, some of the things that I've done, mm -hmm. translations of books that he's done. He's done, he's done translations of um, quite a few of the, the, the text, the texts on Kasab, you know, on livelihood. Yeah, right, right. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the text from Imam Ghazali, he's, he's done a translation for book 13. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, he's done a translation of um, book 20. Mm -hmm. on the on the etiquettes um mm -hmm. uh the prophetic etiquettes uh he's done uh translations for um imam shibani's book on kesab mm -hmm. um imam lubudi mm -hmm. few, a few other a few other texts and again he's written a number of papers mm -hmm. um on on economy as seen through the lens of islam mm -hmm. and um and again we we he and i have also been teaching courses uh for the past few years uh, there's a course that we do call the IGE Pearl, the mm -hmm. Islamic Gift Economy Program for Ethical, Appropriate, and Regenerative Livelihood. And so there, there are, um, if you look on also Instagram, you look up Islamic Gift Economy on Instagram, you'll find a lot of information there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's, I mean, we could do a whole, <laughs> a whole podcast on, that's on that. That's, 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 uh, mashallah, that's, that's yeah. very, very useful, very beneficial. Yeah. I mean, I mean, but what about yourself? I mean, you, you don't have a website, right? Yeah. Uh, no, no, not, not at the moment. So I'm, I'm kind of using, um, you know, the IRL, the IRL is, 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 is one of the platforms that I, that I'm working from. Mm -hmm. um, and then also through Z cell, you know, the work that we're doing there, but uh, you can find some of my work, uh, again, the Yakin paper, the Yakin uh, Institute paper, uh, the uh, Saving Truth and Beauty. Um, there's also a couple of um, uh, uh, publications. There's a book called The Reindeer Chronicles, um, written by a, a, a journalist, a writer named Judith uh, Schwartz. Uh, the subtitle is uh, And Other Inspiring Stories of Working with Nature to Heal the Earth. I, I get a mention okay. um, in one of the chapters. Uh, I'm also in a couple of documentaries mm -hmm. um, looking at, you know, many of the topics that we've been discussing. One's called uh, Inhabit, a Permaculture Perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, and then another one's called the more the most the more recent film. Inshallah, we're going to we're going to show this film at Zaytuna. Mm -hmm. It's okay. called um, Reflection, a Walk with Water. And the name of the filmmaker is um, the name of the filmmaker is uh, Emmett, uh, Emmett, Emmett Brennan. Mm -hmm. So inshallah, we're going to bring Emmett up to the college and we're going to have a, sh a screening of the film and do a discussion mm -hmm. and Q&A at some point. But those mm -hmm. are some of the places you can find more about me and the and the work that, you know, I've, I've been involved with. And uh, and we actually we have a course mm -hmm. uh, coming up at at, uh, at Z cell at, at the upper campus uh, a permaculture design certification mm -hmm. course. It starts on May 25th. Mm -hmm. It runs until June 10th. Uh, mm -hmm. We teach two courses a year, one in the summer and one in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're 14 days. Well, this one's 14 days long. Mm -hmm. um, and again, e e anyone interested in, in learning more about the work that mm -hmm. we're doing can mm -hmm. can look, uh, can go to the Z-Cell website, uh, the Zaytuna College mm -hmm. Center for Ethical Living and Learning website. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And uh, inshallah, we'll have more info posted on uh, the work we've been doing there. Um, and you can also find me at uh, on Instagram, New Maroon Getaway. That's my tag, New Maroon Getaway. Mm -hmm. And uh, inshallah, you can keep up with me there. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Any parting counsel for the audience? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, we were saying before when we got on, you know, you asked how he was doing. I said, uh, you know, I woke, I woke up this morning. And and I think the 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 council or the 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 parting the parting words are you know every every day we have a chance to 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 get up every day we have a chance to open our eyes and draw breath you know it's another day we're given to get it right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I think it's just a matter of us uh, endeavoring to you know improve even if it's just by a, a one small you know atom's weight. Mm -hmm. Inshallah, we're, we're getting better every day mm -hmm. and we're undertaking the effort to improve ourselves because, you know, that's the only thing we really have any hope of having uh, an influence on. It's just being 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 better people mm -hmm. um, our, ourselves. We can manage ourselves. And I think if we take responsibility for managing ourselves, then we will, you know, do the most important thing possible to make the world better is by actually bettering ourselves. And then creating this network of mutual concern, right? I, I want to be better because I want to do, I want to be a benefit to you. Mm -hmm. And inshallah, you want to, you know, you want to be better because you want to be a benefit to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then we can be a benefit to everyone. So that, that's really, you know, the, the, the thing that I, I, I think I'm, I've, I've been trying to be mindful of. It's just the need to do the work necessary to better myself so I can be better, you know, for others. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. Brother Mees, may Allah bless you. May he bless your family. Alakum Sidi. May he, of course, magnify the benefit from you as well. Allahumma uh, Amin. I really, really did enjoy speaking to you. Um, likewise. Likewise. Inshallah, there'll be, there'll, be, there'll, be more, there'll be more opportunities for us to, you know, to, to speak and, you know, chop, chop it up as, as you know. <laughs> like to say right and uh shall I'll, I'll i'll see you on campus <laughs> <laughs> all right all right until next time man see you around okay yeah. all right so i go all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> thanks for watching be sure to like subscribe share and support check the links in the description below to keep up with our work thank you